I mean, from my own experience, when I, when I was initially teaching science, I felt it was my responsibility to impart as much science knowledge uh, on my students or to my students. I felt like my job, because that was my experience as a student, when I had been, especially in high school and college, it was um, I was supposed to sit and gather information from the instructor who would give me all of this science information. So early in my career, I really felt like that was my job, that I was supposed to get through a lot of content. I was supposed to make sure that that students were aware of lots of different um, content type ideas and facts. Um, and then when I started working with Brian was when I started to make, in my mind, this sort of fundamental switch and, and maybe theoretical switch where I said, you know, really, my job as a science teacher is, is to help students develop their own understanding of the science concepts, but at the same time they're developing those understandings of science concepts, they should be developing an understanding of how we develop knowledge in science. And so what was great to me, and what is great to me about the SWH is that what you have are students who are engaged in the practices of science, they're, they're testing things, they're answering questions, they're engaged in the argument aspect, they're defending their claims backed with evidence, um, and as they're doing that, they're both developing their conceptual understanding of what's happening and, and, and developing you know, deeper understanding of fundamental concepts in science, but they're also developing this awareness of, well, this is how science knowledge is built, and, and this is, these are the factors that influence that. Um, now it's much more about developing an environment in which these sorts of things can happen versus me telling as much information as I can. And what does it mean to integrate science and technology and engineering and math? I feel like that the SWH provides a really natural opportunity to do that. I think you, you, if done in an appropriate way, I think what the SWH allows is the infusion and the integration of math and technology and you know, application to engineering type projects in a very, very natural way. You know, initially, I just need to engage the students in some sort of activity that's going to get questions generated about physical chemical changes. So we're going to make ice cream in a bag, and we're going to we're going to experience and observe these changes that take place, and we're going to start talking about well, which of those, you know, changed the chemicals, and which of those were just physical changes, and why do you think that? And just get some questions sort of popping up in their minds, then we're going to go do some sort of lab activity. And you know, with high school chemistry, there may be some constraints, but I'm not going to let them completely design the testing on their own, but I'm going to give them different stations where they're going to mix different things or they're going to have different things interact, and then they're just going to record their observations. And their job becomes to make sense of those observations that will lead then to this conversation in our classroom, this discourse about their claims backed with their evidence of which of those were physical, which of those were chemical changes. Um, and then after all of that happens, there's this consulting with experts where we say, okay, we've studied this, we've come up with our ideas, we've had an experience. Now, we're not the first people in the history of the world to study physical and chemical changes. So let's utilize these other sources of scientific information and see how our ideas match with theirs. That allows us to still have this conversation about there are scientifically accepted ideas that I, as the instructor, feel are, are important for students to understand and maybe the standards of my district or, or in, in our case now, the new Iowa science standards and the next generation science standards, that they uh, have determined our important foundational fundamental concepts. But everything that we do to develop those is grounded in some sort of student experience that is that is argument based that is based on the students making sense of their own observations making sense of their testing uh, situations and that sort of thing so you know to me a lot of the terms that you probably hear people you know the immersive environment the argument based environment the the idea that the students are engaged in the science practices is happening in a way where they're developing understanding, they're developing an understanding of this is how you develop understanding and what, what is sort of, from a you know, scientific perspective, what is accepted. You know, for me personally, seeing research results that show student understanding in science is improved, that show you know, students, especially critical thinking, is improved, that show you know, students' ability to communicate and use, we've done a lot of work with multimodal representations and multiple representations, their ability to understand and use those sorts of representations was improved. Their understanding of how science works was improved. Their understanding of math, their understanding of re you know, all these things, as I you know, was able to research it, work with Brian, find out, that helped convince me. It is an immersive, argument-based approach to helping kids better understand science concepts and how science is done. I think it's a, it's an, it's a framework or an approach that you can apply to 
helping students develop conceptual understanding of lots of different concepts in science in which the students are going to be engaged in these practices. And as they're engaged in the practices, they're going to have to be negotiating their own personal understanding and they're going to have to be working as a group and as a class to negotiate and sometimes even a larger, you know, when they interact with other classes, um, they're going to be negotiating their understanding of of the observations they're making, which hopefully will lead to this understanding of the science concept. So, you know, to me, it's this more general overall framework. It's we, we, data that we have that shows, you know, it's improving students' understanding of, of the science concepts, but also other content areas, and it's improving the students' um, ability to understand how science works and the, and the, and the uh, sort of nature of science. I think those are the things that, to me, are really powerful in convincing us that that's this is an effective uh, approach. But some of those students are going to go on and they're going to go into a science career or, or field of study or a STEM field of study. So yes, part of our job is to help develop them in a way where they have that foundational understanding. But I, I think for those students to understand, here's how we generate and develop our understanding of science is really critically important because that's what they're gonna be doing if they go into those careers. But really probably the majority of the students we deal with are not going to go into those careers. What we are hoping for them, in my mind, is that they become scientifically literate or STEM literate students who understand scientific problems, who understand how we can apply science to engineering problems, who understand how math and science and technology are all related, and are able to, like exactly like you said, you know, understand problems that pop up in their real life or Maybe they have to you know, make a decision in terms of who they're going to vote for and those sorts of things. And how are these people discussing these ideas that are scientific ideas? It takes time for teachers to sort of grasp, but also implement and, and maybe um, continue to work through some of the work that's involved. Because it, you know, it, it is not easy to develop this immersive argument-based learning environment in your classroom. There, there's things that you as a teacher from a planning perspective have to take into consideration that are different from what you've had to do before. You have to be flexible, you have to you know, be able to plan but be flexible and react and interact um, to what the students are coming up with. There's a, there's a degree of sort of convincing yourself that it's worth that. There's a time we started working a little bit with this idea of multimodal communication and how do you get students to utilize text plus diagrams plus graphs plus charts and all those sorts of things in a cohesive integrated sort of way to communicate like a scientist. Well that fits really well with this overall approach and looking at how does that align with the approach has been exciting.